Welcome to iLecture Online. In this video, we're going to explore where the equation describing the change in the wavelength due to the Compton effect came from. So let's explore the Compton effect again. Here we have a photon which approaches an electron. If it interacts with the electron, it will give the electron a bump. The electron will go off in one direction and the photon will go off in another direction. If the photon has a wavelength lambda before the collision, it will have a different wavelength after the collision, a longer wavelength because part of the energy of the photon will have been given to the electron so that the electron can then scoot out of there, so to speak, with a very high velocity. Notice that the angle relative to the initial direction of the photon is phi and theta. Phi is the relative angle for the photon after the collision, Theta gives you the angle of the direction for the electron after the collision. Notice that the electron has an energy, h times the frequency, where h is the Planck's constant, and the momentum of a photon is the energy of the photon divided by c, therefore it's hf over c. The energy after the collision for the photon will be h times f prime. Now, f prime, that's not the derivative, it's just a different frequency, a lower frequency, will therefore give this a, a longer wavelength. And so the momentum can also be described for the photon after the collision as h f prime over c. The energy of the electron, and we probably can assume that that electron will have relativistic uh, velocities, so we could say that the energy is mc squared, where m is the relativistic mass. So we have lambda m sub naught c squared, where m sub naught is the rest mass. We could also be expressed in terms of this, where we have it as the rest mass energy squared plus the momentum squared. The momentum would be, well, that's not really the momentum. The p is the momentum times c squared. We can also express the momentum as m times v, again m being the relativistic mass, or with the lambda here where m sub naught times v. And for those who are interested, we can say that lambda is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. So that's where that lambda came from. Also realizing that the relationship between the rest mass and the total energy of a particle is such that we have the momentum of the particle p times the speed of light. We have the rest mass here, and notice that the total energy is the hypotenuse length of the rest mass energy plus the kinetic energy, and so we'll get into that a little bit more later as necessary. So what we're trying to find now is we're trying to find how much the, the wavelength will change. Basically what we're looking for is we're looking for lambda sub naught minus lambda. We're looking for the difference, and actually we're really looking for the change in the wavelength of the photon before and after the collision, realizing that lambda prime, so to speak, or I should say lambda with the little accent mark on it, that is the longer wavelength after the collision minus the shorter wavelength. So how much is the wavelength change? And that's what we're trying to figure out using the conservation momentum. So we need to solve the conservation momentum in two directions, the x direction as well as the y direction. So in the x direction, notice that the initial momentum is only that of the photon. So we have P of the photon, which is HF over C, plus the momentum of the electron, which will be zero because it's motionless before the collision, equals the momentum afterwards. For the photon, it's going to be the momentum is going to be hf prime over c, hf prime over c, times the cosine of the angle. In this case, we use the angle phi. So that would be the momentum of the photon in the x direction plus the momentum of the electron in the x direction. We're just going to use p as the momentum of the electron times the cosine of theta. In the y direction, we should end up with a similar equation. In the y direction, notice that there's no momentum before the collision, so it would be 0 plus 0 equals. For the photon, it will be, as before, it will be h f prime over c, but in this case, we want the y component, which is the sine of the angle phi plus Oh, not plus, it's going to have to be minus because you can see that the momentum of the electron is in the negative direction. So it's minus the momentum of the electron 
times the sine of the angle theta, because we're talking about the y direction. So those are the two conservation of momentum equations for the collision between the photon and the electron and in the x direction and in the y direction. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to multiply both equations by c, because we want to get it 1 over c, we want to get rid of that, and we're going to square both equations. Also, I think what we want to do is we want to solve for this variable right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this in the front, turn the equation around. So let's write it like this. First, we're going to multiply everything by C and move the terms around a little bit. So we end up with P times C times the cosine of theta. So we take this one right here. And uh, that is going to be equal to this component times C, which is HF. And when we bring this across, it will become minus HF prime times the cosine of phi. So it's a little bit more compact that way. Notice we multiply everything by C, and then we isolated this by itself. This is going to be P times C times the cosine of theta, and move this to the other side, it becomes negative. Turn the equation around. We'll do the same with this one here. Move this over here, multiply both sides by C. We'll end up with P times C times the sine of theta is equal to HF prime times the sine of phi. All right, now what we can do is square both sides. When we square both sides, we get the following. We get PC quantity squared times the cosine square of theta equals, when we square this amount, we get the first term squared, HF squared, minus twice the product of these two, because there's a minus here, so minus two times H squared F, F prime times the cosine of phi. And then we take this term squared, that would be plus the quantity H F prime squared times the cosine square of phi. We'll do the same with the other equation, square both sides. So let me make sure we separate those two. So here we get PC quantity squared times the sine square of theta is equal to hf prime squared times the sine squared of phi. Now you might start seeing why we ended up doing that, why we squared both sides. Because notice now when I add this equation to this equation, I add the two left sides together and I add the two right sides together. Since we have a cosine square and a sine square of theta and a cosine square and a sine square of phi, we might be able to simplify that a little bit by eliminating some of those variables, or at least those parts of those terms. So let's go ahead and now add the left sides together. So what that means is on the left side, we'll end up with PC quantity squared times the cosine square of theta plus the sine square of theta. That, of course, will go to 1, which is equal to, and we, we now add the right sides together, so we end up with hf squared minus, let's see here, minus, we have an hf prime, okay, so minus 2 times h squared f, f prime times a cosine of phi, and then plus, now notice when we add this and this term together, we end up with hf prime squared times the cosine square of phi plus the sine square of phi. And notice that this here will go to 1, and this here will go to 1. And then if we then simplify what's left, let's see what we get, what we end up with. We end up with PC quantity squared is equal to, on the left side we have HF quantity squared. Oh, no, let's see here. HF, am I doing this right? Ah, uh, this square should be on the outside. There we go, squared minus 2 h squared f f prime cosine of phi and then here we still have the plus h f prime quantity squared all right now we're still a long ways from getting to this equation right here but be patient we'll get there and we're going to need a part two of course since i'm beginning to run out of the board space and we're not quite yet to where we need to go but we'll get there in just a moment so this is probably a good place where we can stop. So let's see what we have so far. 
P is the momentum of the electron after the collision. See, of course, speed of light. H is Planck's constant. F is the frequency of the photon before the collision. F prime is the frequency of the photon after the collision. We have the cosine of phi, so the difference in the wavelengths will depend upon the angle of the photon relative to the initial direction of the photon. In other words, depending upon which way the photon scatters out the electron, the, the amount of the change in the energy of the photon will depend upon that angle. So we'll see that from this right here. And then finally we have H F prime again. F prime is the frequency of the photon after the collision. So on the next video, we'll start with this equation right here and we'll take it from here all the way to the difference in the two wavelengths. So if you're interested where the Compton equation came from, there it is. That's the halfway point. And the next video we'll get to the final derivation of what that equation looks like.